Good afternoon, Anne Arundel County. Good afternoon, America. Welcome to Promoting. Don't get fooled again with class. I'm your host, Anthony Bynum. The name of our production company is the Glenn Bernie Players. I think this is number 44. So these are exciting times here in Anne Arundel County, and we're going to talk a little bit about that during our show today. But before we do that, we have some shout outs. We first want to acknowledge our affiliates. So in Greenbelt, Maryland, there is the uh, Greenbelt Cable Access. Actually, they're Greenbelt, Maryland, which is in PG County, Maryland, I should say. And then also Amherst Media. They're in Amherst, Massachusetts. They run our shows for us on request. So we want to thank them both. Also, we have events coming up. So in March, I believe it's the 23rd, there is the Greater Ferndale Community Civic Community Association's Bunny Hop. So that's in celebration of Easter. That's for children, uh, you know, find the eggs, that kind of thing. It's always a fun time. Hopefully, even though it's later on in March, hopefully it's warm because sometimes Maryland weather can be a little rainy around this time of year. So hopefully uh, we have good weather for that event. They are located at 7205 Baltimore uh, BNA Boulevard. Also, Ferndale Day, that's 518. The same people, Greater Ferndale Community Civic Association, it might be Civic Community Association, but they run the same event, uh, uh, the uh, Ferndale Day, which is a big event. We'll talk more about that later, but a lot going on there that's usually held over there in Wagner Field, and uh, it's great fun. Last year was a lot of fun. So we'll be talking more about that in the future. We want to give credit where credit is due. So most of our research comes from Wikipedia. They are great people. They do great work. But also, we have something new this week. It is uh, a poem that's actually written by Barbara Vance, and she wrote it at a site called suzybittner.com. We'll be talking about that in a little bit. Let's start off with our most admired segment. Let's go to our screen share. Perfect. Julia Childs. So Julia Childs, the famous, famous chef, was born 815 1912, she died 813, 2004. She was actually born Julia Carol McWilliams into a prominent family. Her father was a Princeton grad and was a prominent landowner. Her mother was a paper heiress, and her grandfather was Lieutenant Governor of Massachusetts. So she was born into a prominent, prominent family. But at the time that she was born, women tend, tended, society tended not to, to push the idea of um, of careers on women. So her career is really amazing. We're going to talk a little bit about that, but it didn't, it, but more than likely that was not her plan in the beginning. I guess that's what we want to say. She was actually a tall woman. I don't actually have her height, but she played sports at Smith College in Northampton, Massachusetts. She graduated in 1934 with a major in history. Now she, before, in 1942, she joined what was called OSS, which was the Office of Strategic Services. They might have been the forerunner for the, forerunner for the CIA. I'm not exactly sure there. She started as a typist, but soon she received a top position because she was, she was a smart lady. And uh, she worked with the head of OSS, who was a general, uh, William Donovan. Now, of course, you know, she would have had to have a, a security clearance to have a job like that. Come on now, right? Um, one interesting assignment that she was involved in was assisting in the development of a shark repellent that was needed to make sure that the ordinances that were designed to target uh, the U-boats, uh, the, the German U-boats in World War II, uh, were not detonated by sharks. In 1944, 1945, she was assigned to a location that eventually became Sri Lanka. I'll look that up and I'll get that, that name back to you guys later on. Now, st while still in this location that would become Sri Lanka, which is off the coast of Africa, right? Sri Lanka's Africa. Yes, right? Yes. Uh, she met and married Paul Cushing Child. He was also with OSS. Most likely he was an agent. And again, they married. Now, this guy was had a bit of a sophisticated palate. See, he had lived in Paris as an artist and poet, most likely before the war. Uh, in 1948, he joins the U.S. Foreign Service and is stationed in Paris, 
with the United States Information Agency. Most likely after World War II, we had a lot of assets in, in France. And, um, you know, he liked French food. So after uh, Julia had her first French meal, uh, she was hooked. She was hooked. She studied at the famous Cordon Bleu and probably under master chef Max uh, Bergnard, B-U-G-N-A-R-D. She wrote books. Matter of fact, in the late 60s, she was a cancer survivor too. So this was just all in all a smart but tough lady, you know. So going forward, uh, in 1961, she did an appearance on a book review uh, in Boston, back in the States by now, uh, with NET, which was the National Education Television, now in Boston's public television station, WGBH-TV. And it was on cooking an omelet. The people ate it up. She was fantastic. Uh, the French chef debuted in the summer of 1962. So she didn't go out to become this career woman, but she became this career woman. Now, I remember, and Julia Childs was so big in the in the 70s uh, growing up. Everyone knew who she was, you know, public television. I mean, you only got so many channels. <laughs> it's like, everybody watch some Julia Childs. And... Um, I remember my freshman year in high school, I took a home ex class and my instructor was uh, Mrs. Kleiner. And, uh, you know, she was nice enough, but, you know, she was kind of no nonsense, you know. I mean, teaching a bunch of rowdy kids, right? So my assignment was to cook a crepe, a crepe, right? That's what they call crepe. And of course I screwed it up. But the whole time I was impersonating Julia Childs. Because she was so fun to impersonate. You say things like, oh, now you got to take the shirt. You got to take the eggs. You got to make sure the batter is just right. And then you got to... And I was doing the mannerisms. She ate it up. She loved it. And it was all up until the point where I put the hot pan on the plastic uh, 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 tablecloth that she had to shut me down. But other than that, she loved it. Everyone was cracking up. Uh, Julia Childs, amazing career, amazing career. She's one of the most popular people in the history of television. Uh, and uh, seems like a nice lady too. I know they've done a lot of movies about Julia Childs these last couple of years because it just doesn't get old. Uh, when we admire somebody, we don't know what it is specifically about them that we admire, uh, but we just do. You know what I mean? We just do. So what we want to do is we're going to move on with something of consequence regarding Anne Arundel County. I'm going to switch my uh, my screen share. I'm just going to keep it there. So what we're going to talk about is Marley Mall. Marley Mall uh, was built in 1987 in Glen Burnie, Maryland. It has space for 130 stores and two floors. Now, we know they're not all full now. But we'll talk about some of the financial issues that, that have been going on with the mall in the last 10 years or so. Tubman Centers completed the building in 1987. During construction, a body was actually found in a trash can. A body later identified as Roger Kelso. Not quite sure of the relationship there, uh, who Robert was, but um, I'm not saying it was omen of things to come, but it did happen. The famous Hex out of Washington, D.C. was an original anchor store. Now, Taubman sold to the Mills Corporation. Later, it became part of Simon Property Group in 2004. It has an eight-screen movie theater. It was originally run by United Artists. They, at some point, turned it over to Regal, and they ran it, and they closed it un, uh, without any advance notice. It was kind of a weird thing some years back. But it's up and running now. Horizon runs it. And I've been going to movies here. You know, the nicest thing about Marley Mall Station as it's well-maintained, it's a very clean, it's very well-maintained. And that's an important thing because you go to the mall is not just to buy stuff, but it's kind of as an event, you know what I mean? A cheap event. You see people, you can do a little people watching, maybe you buy something, maybe you don't. Maybe you get something to eat, maybe you don't. But it's an event, and you want to do these events in nice places. Uh, something else I wanted to say about Marley, oh, about the movie theaters. Yes, this movement over these last 10 years, you... To what these what these theaters are doing, 
is they take out a lot of seats and they make turn them into reclining chairs and they charge more for the tickets. Well, reclining chairs in a theater is not a good idea because you spend $11 to go to sleep. I can sleep at the house. That's just my two cents, but just, I gotta be, I gotta be honest. That's just the way I see it. Now the mall has been in some financial issues these last um, 10 or 12 years. I think they declared bankruptcy once, maybe even twice. I'm not sure the tenants are actually paying rent now. I don't know. I've heard some things about that. My son, Anton mentioned some things. I don't actually know. I know the great Sears was there and they made their final hurrah there. Still, Marley Mall, it's a clean, well-maintained place. And um, for that, I got to give it kudos. So from the consequence regarding in around the county, that's it. All right. So we're going to stop our screens here. And we're going to go into the last segment. So I always like to look at a poem or a speech. I like to combine the themes we've had so far. So we looked at the life of the great Julia Childs. And we also looked at the life of the great Marley Mall, right? So what would be better than to look at something regarding malls and something regarding cooking? And what I came up with is this, um, this poem. It's called Happy Chef. And again, it was written by Barbara Vance on a site called Susie Bittner. I'm going to read it for you. I'm a dynamite baker. Just look at my cake. Of course, it fell in the middle. A minor mistake. And sample my cookies. They're charred, but you'll see. They still taste like chocolate. Just slightly crispy. And please try a muffin. This re recipe's new. The dough wouldn't rise. So it's blueberry goo. It's now how the cookie... It's not how the cooking book said it would be, but it's new and it's better. Just try, you'll see. I've unearthed my calling. It's easy as pie. You'll just never guess. It's my very first try. That was very well. I like the rhymes. Good job. Good job. So, and again, that was uh, Barbara Vance. She wrote that on the site called uh, suzybittner.com. So, as I noted, these are exciting times here in Anne Arundel County. We have some events that are coming up in the future at the uh, Greater Ferndale Civic Community Association. Yeah, I got it right that time. And um, uh, beautiful weather, or weather starting to turn. It's getting a little nicer. We're not having to wear so many so many layers of clothes. So, for everyone here, the Glen Burnie Players. Again, my name is Anthony Bynum. Until next time, bye bye.